If you have a hiatal hernia, you may have been told that you have a weak LES. So what does that mean? Let's dive into it. Let's talk about how that part of your body can be affected by another part of your body, really a protection mechanism, and, and how amazing the human body is. So let's jump into it. Uh, a little anatomy, your mouth is connected to your stomach via a tube called the esophagus and it has two sphincters they're called or valves uh, one in the upper esophagus one in the lower esophagus so it's the lower esophageal sphincter les that we're going to be discussing so the esophagus uh, on its way to your stomach also passes through your diaphragm the dome-like muscle that is also an organ that that's going to be the, the key player that we're going to talk about today so um, here's your stomach and it's a little bit off to the left. This is my left side. And um, this, the esophagus is a tube that connects to it. And just before the esophagus connects to your stomach, there is the lower esophageal sphincter. And so what it does, it's, it's like a valve that um, kind of maintains its tone. Uh, when you're swallowing, things are passing through. It of course opens because it senses food uh, or drink coming through, and then it, it gets back to sort of a nice tone, but it of course has to allow food and drink to pass. So when it's nicely toned, then it's preventing reflux, which is the key to where the hiatal hernia issues all started with is, is acid reflux. Now, it, the key point here is that, that the stomach is nicely comfortably below the diaphragm and where your esophagus meets the stomach, where the sphincter is, is also when things are anatomically correct below your diaphragm. So it turns out that where the esophagus passes through your diaphragm, before the sphincter and then and then attaches to the stomach uh, that the diaphragm itself acts as almost a backup sphincter so uh, when there's uh, like a coughing or sneezing um, it, it acts to sort of guard and prevent uh, any reflux from occurring so the human body is is incredible uh, on so many levels but this sort of backup or redundancy that it's providing is is very very cool now if you have a hiatal hernia of course what happens is your stomach is pushing up above the diaphragm. So if your stomach's above your diaphragm, now sliding, 95% of them are sliding, which means they're up, they're down, they're up, they're down. But when it's up, that means your stomach's above the diaphragm and so is the LES, right? It has to be because it's above the stomach and your diaphragm is now down here. So now the diaphragm can't help you out, right? It can't help you with that kind of cinching um, of, of that acting like another sphincter to prevent things from refluxing because the stomach's above. So hopefully that makes sense. So what's key here is that we want a nice healthy backup system. We want that diaphragm to really work the way it should. Now what compromises that? The same thing that compromises the stomach, which is increased intra-abdominal pressure. So that means pressure from below the diaphragm and it's exerting pressure on your stomach, outside force on, upon the stomach, which is causing the, the stomach to get squished you know, pressure put upon it, and it has no choice but to bring the acid up, and then over time, with that pressure, 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 it's also putting pressure on that lower esophageal sphincter, so it can't function as well, but it's also putting pressure on your diaphragm, because remember, your diaphragm bows down when you inhale, and then bows back up when you exhale, and it's a this beautiful, relaxed, um, dance that it does to bring air in and out but as you inhale it's that backup sphincter that backup valve that helps kind of cinch that esophagus closed but what can happen with the increased intra-abdominal pressure is that the diaphragm it, it kind of spasms uh, the pressure is not allowing it to have that free floating motion that it should have and so that that pressure is compromising the diaphragm's ability to move, which is why 
it, it's still moving, you're still breathing, but it's not that beautiful, relaxed motion that it should be. It's more like, eh, 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 like that. And so then um, what happens is you feel that kind of guarding or spasming feeling and your body shifts into shallow breathing, you know, more with your shoulders, uh, and you're not getting that nice effortless air that you should have. So again, when the diaphragm is compromised, it's back up valve system with your esophagus is compromised. And so the way that mother nature created us in, in having this, this duplicity and this uh, redundancy of making sure that stomach contents don't go the wrong way, that's compromised. So what's key is one, of course, to get to the root of the increased intra-abdominal pressure. That has to be done. And that's looking at the gut. And that's looking at stomach function, liver function, pancreas function, gallbladder function, small intestine function, large intestine function. That maybe sound overwhelming. It's not actually. Um, that's what we specialize in, but it's all about what's the source or sources, right? Plural. There can be a few sources that are coming together to create that increased intra-abdominal pressure. But that's very key, not only to allow your stomach to relax and be below your diaphragm and allow your diaphragm to function optimally, but also to get to the root of this digestive imbalance that's bound to create a lot of problems for you going down the line because it's no overstatement to say that if you don't have good digestive health, it's truly impossible to be healthy. So hardly anything more important than putting your attention on optimizing your digestive health. So um, what else affects the diaphragm? Your vagus nerve goes to your diaphragm. And so it's important to have proper vagus nerve health. Now this gets into a little bit of a catch 22 because the vagus nerve gets irritated by poor digestive health. So if we're not getting to the root cause of the increased intra-abdominal pressure, then we're just constantly aggravating and nagging at that vagus nerve. But if we take that aside, um, looking at vagus nerve health, you want to make sure that uh, you are doing certain exercises for your diaphragm so that it's, it's not spasm, sort of retraining it, if you will. So you wanna to get to the root cause of why, but then if that diaphragm has been in sort of that compromised state for a while, you need to retrain it, get it to relax again, and that's part of uh, what we do. Also, uh, the vagus nerve comes out of your brain and goes down the front of your neck. So if you have that forward neck posture that you see people, you see them walking and they're sort of leading with their chin, um, your, your head should be comfortably over your entire spine. So this, this posture puts literal physical stretch upon your vagus nerve and it can be very compromised that way. So uh, doing certain neck exercises, whether you see a doctor of chiropractic or a physical therapist to get that curvature of the spine and again, the position of all the vertebrae in the neck in the right place is also very critical. So that's, that's why our program embraces both the internal and the structural because you really have to evaluate all of it to really get the job done. So I hope that explains the importance of the diaphragm, uh, why to work on it, why to get to the root cause of anything that's compromising its function because even if, because so many times um, people are told, well, I just have a weak LES, there's nothing I can do about it. Well, if we reduce that intra-abdominal pressure, what happens? The stomach relaxes and now it's nicely below the diaphragm. So even if the LES is a bit compromised, if we can get that diaphragm, right, in its beautiful redundancy function of, of sort of uh, crimping off, if you will, acting as a valve on that esophagus, which is by design one of its jobs, then 
there you are. You're not, you're not compromised uh, anymore, and you should be able to function fairly normally. So that's what we see here. Uh, so hopefully that explains it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. If you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're trying to increase our subscribers so that more people can uh, see the content and be helped by the content. And the way the algorithm works is the more subscribers, the, the more you, you, people see your videos. So, and if you like it, give it a thumbs up. I respond to just about every comment I get. So I love hearing from you and I appreciate you. And we'll talk soon.